In this Java tutorial, we're going to learn about binary recursion, and we're going to look at it using the example of the Fibonacci sequence. Some important facts. Binary recursion is when a recursive method calls itself twice in each run. A well-known example is using binary recursion to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. The first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are 1 and 1, or sometimes 0 and 1. Later digits are calculated by adding the two previous digits. Let's take a look at the Fibonacci sequence. So we start out with 1 and 1, and our third digit is the sum of the two previous digits, so 1 plus 1 equals 2, then 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8, and so on. This is a problem that's well made for recursion because we calculate our current value by adding the two previous values, which can also be calculated by adding their two previous values. Let's write some code to calculate the Fibonacci sequence recursively. First, we'll make a method that returns an int, and it takes in an int parameter called digit. This will be what digit in the Fibonacci sequence we're looking for. We start by writing the base case. If we're looking for digit 1 or digit 2, we're simply going to return 1 because digit 1 and 2 are always 1. In our recursive case, we're going to add the sum of the digit before the current 1 and the digit that's two digits before the current 1, and we're going to call the same method to calculate it. Here we add a main method that's going to call fib and pass the argument 5 so it'll print out the fifth digit in the Fibonacci sequence. How we trace this out is a little different. We'll do it in an upside-down tree format that's typical with binary recursion. So we start with our first call, fib, and pass the value 5. This is not the base case because digits is not equal 1 or 2, so we're going to make two calls to the same method. We're going to call fib digit minus 1, which is 4, and then digit minus 2, which is 3. So we branch it off into two separate calls. I usually go down the left tree branch and then go back around and fill out anything I need to. So we're going to go to fib 4. 4 is going to go into that parameter. We see that it's not 1 or 2, so we're going to make a call to fib 3 and then fib 2. Next, we make a call to fib and passing it the value 3. It's not equal to 1 or 2, so we make a call to fib 2 and then fib 1. Now we've hit two base cases. We know fib, if we pass it the value 2, is going to return 1. And we know if you pass fib the value 1, it's going to return 1. So now we can add up these two values and figure out what is fib3 going to return? And fib3 will return 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now, we can look at fib2. We already know what fib2 returns because we can see it from this example. So we don't even have to look at the code. So we can just say fib2 will return 1. We also know that fib3 is always going to return 2. So we don't have to create the extra branches on this end of the tree. We simply cross it out and write in 2. Next, we add 2 plus 1, which will be 3, so we know fib 4 will return 3. And then to calculate fib 5, we add 3 plus 2, because that's what fib 4 plus fib 3 returned. And we learn that when we call fib 5, it'll return 5, because 5 is the fifth digit in the Fibonacci sequence. Depending on the problem you are using, you may not be able to simply fill in the other parts of the tree. You may have to draw additional branches, but it's always valuable to see if there's ones that have already been calculated and then fill it in on other branches of the tree. Another important thing to remember is you're not always going to be adding the two calls together. You could be subtracting them, multiplying, dividing, or doing some other operation. To see the next video in this sequence, please click on the link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.